day in Washington, D.C. And I think we're gonna go to the Natural History Museum, uh, spend some time in there, and then we'll probably go do some other things. Have fun, baby? I am, but it is balls hot out here. It is. And it's weird because the camera's all foggy. <laughs> so that should give you an indication of how like humid this area is. Just by just the sheer fogginess of everything. Greetings everyone. We are not at another theme park, baby. We are actually here. Where are we, baby? Huh? Where are we at? We're at the National Museum of Natural History. Yes. So we're here to see natural history, the growth of America, dinosaurs, all sorts of things. So we're really excited about coming to check this out. Let's go in. Now this is almost similar to how, I would say the setup for the, uh, the National Museum of African American History is set up. Like the store is down here. We're on the ground floor. We have to go up to see some of the exhibits. So we're gonna have to go up. We'll take a look at this. And this exhibit looks like it's just more like global water biodiversity. This is cool. Take a look at this. This is a scalloped hammerhead. It's a very small hammerhead shark. And this is preserved. So these type of jellyfish is called a lion's mane jellyfish. I think, we, yeah, that thing is scary. I don't want to touch that. Well, they also have all sorts of different jellyfishes. Their mouths go up. Did you know that they have different mouths? They have different mouths? Yes, yeah, some jellyfish's mouths go up and some go down. Oh, wow. Look at this one. This is a moon jellyfish. Also, take a look at this. This is a display of a giant squid. Look how huge it is. This is the squid, and its tentacles just keep going and going. This is the tentacles like stretch all the way out to its longest. Um, how big do this thing say it is? Like from here all the way back there. Gosh, look at this. And this is about a two to three year old immature female. And then when it was alive, it was about 11 meters, which is 30 feet long. And if you look above me, this is the skull of a baleen whale. Now the baleen whales, like what they do is that they swim underwater with their mouths wide open and they just catch everything. They just kind of sift their food out through the water. But wow, like that thing is huge. I could fit in there. Look at all these other skeletons up here. Cool is that you can see the evolution of humans. Uh, so here, take a look at the skull. And then see how it evolves here. Get kind of a much larger like skull here. Yeah. And then you get Homo erectus. So if you look right in front of it, you turn, you can almost see how it's starting to evolve to humans to its final shape with this Homo sapiens. And this shows you how you're related to how we are related to different species uh, genetically. I mean, we're pretty close with the primates, like chimpanzees and gorillas and orangutans and rhea's monkeys. We're not, though, a banana tree. We're, we're very far from it. But 60% is a very high number. We could be a banana. So I guess technically I'm allergic to 60% of myself. And along with the brains, with the skulls that you just saw, you can see how the brains evolved over time become our human brains. This is cool because they've been collecting fossils of all sorts of different skulls. That way they can kind of track it through history to see our evolution. Now some have been probably cracked and destroyed, but this is really cool to see. Take a look at this. They got a brown bear. These things are super, super gigantic. They're huge. And luckily, I've not got to see one. 
in the wild myself. Luckily, or I wouldn't be doing these videos. If you take a look up there, there's a polar bear. We got a lot of exhibits here about uh, cold animals, but above there you see that polar bear. Yeah, pretty intimidating. Check this out. It's an armored rat. So look at like how his fur like sticks up, like sticks up like points. It looks like if anybody tried to attack this squirrel, you'll get hurt in the process. But these things are basically like located in Central and South America. We, won't, we probably won't have to worry too much about these running around our homes. And then this right here is a Mara. Looks like a giant, like, kangaroo rabbit thing. Boobandoo! I wanna be like you! So this right here is the Morgan Nusu... Morgan Nucolodon? This is actually one of the very first mammals on Earth. Probably about two and a, 210 million years ago, we lived on this Earth. And its DNA was passed on to billions of descendants, including us. We're somewhat related to this little guy. It's a hippopotamus. Definitely one of the world's largest land mammals. Well, it's a giraffe. Well, this is cool. I never know this. Like when the heads are up, the neck valves open. But if they drop their heads down, the valves close. So that way they don't like have all the blood rushing to their head. Like here, the blood flows like perfectly fine. But if they lower the neck, blood just doesn't flow at all. If you take a look, just like that giraffe figure that we were talking about here's the giraffe up close as if i'm standing right next to the giraffe look how tall this thing is and there's a white rhinoceros it's currently endangered by the way these things are massive i think this little area this rotunda here this even seeing the elephant I've seen it in a lot of movies. This is going to be a while. We're going to go up. I want to go see the Hope Diamond. That's that's what we should see. This is exciting. We're going to go see the Hope Diamond. Let's take a look at that. That's the Hope Diamond. Very famous Hope Diamond. And I'm standing in front of it. How cool is this? The Hope Diamond has existed for more than a billion years since it formed deep within the Earth. The Atlantic Ocean has opened, closed, and opened again. The dinosaurs have come and gone, and humans have evolved and spread across the face of the Earth. And over the past three centuries, a rich human history full of mystery and intrigue has made it one of the world's most famous gemstones. The legend says that it's also haunted, too, is that every owner is a very grisly inn for every time that they owned it. It's been sitting here in the Smithsonian for a very, very long time. This right here is a Cullen and blue diamond necklace, silver and gold. Edwardian style necklace brooch is highlighted by nine blue diamonds, weighing a total of 5.57 carats, including the 2.60 carat Cullen and blue diamond. And if you're looking at this, you may be wondering what this is. This is sandstone, and it's all collected all in one. It's a natural sandstone uh, formation. It's made of quartz, the same mineral as the giant crystals across the room which is that right there. So the thing with the quartz here is that there's a lot of crystals that kind of grew together and kind of made the formation that we're looking at. The other one is like a lot more rounded. It's still in the very sandstone state, but in here, it's a giant quartz. And here's uh, the McKay Emerald and Diamond Necklace. Look how green these are. Especially this one, the Maximilian Emerald Ring. I'm a big Green Lantern fan, but this is about as close to what I imagine the Green Lantern ring will look like. Remember the baleen whales? Here is the skeleton of a baleen whale. Now I'm sure there's probably much, there's some that are much bigger than this, but this would actually be another representation. And you can actually see some skeletons of various monkeys. These are marmosets. Uh, 
a capuchin monkey, a squirrel monkey right here. Take a look at that. Oh, wow, here's a skeleton of a leatherback turtle. Seen from the underside. Obviously, if it had a shell in front of us, we wouldn't be able to see, but this thing is huge. Look at this crocodile. This is a skeleton of a crocodile. These things can get much bigger than what you're seeing here. Um, I don't know, this one is probably like a good, maybe 10 foot, 12 foot gator. But look at this one. It's like an early alligator. It's like a gabiel. Look at that. That'd be kind of gnarly to see in person. Look at the black caiman right here. And you can see his skin on top of it. Look at the skeleton of the swordfish. Like these things look gnarly. And this thing is a huge swordfish. A lot bigger than what like I've imagined anyway. Take a look at this Egyptian coffin here. With the inscriptions inside. What they have here is a, uh, it's a bull mummy. Um, what you're seeing right now is about nine layers of wrappings to protect the bull. Uh, they actually have an x-ray of the bull inside. You can see the skeleton inside. But here, this is wrapped. Wrapped, wrapped, wrapped. Even the horns. Take a look at this. They actually got an actual mummy here on display. This mummy was from 300 BC to, to 150 AD. And then you can actually see the evolution of the mummy. You have to look at that right there. As you can see, there's all sorts of different artifacts here um, from ancient Egypt, which is great. Look at this old like, like coffin here that they would have used the different urns. This is awesome. Take a look. They got the fossils of a triceratops. I think it's massive. And if you just like look at his skull, look how big it is. And if you can like almost imagine that it had like its skin and everything. There's another Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now this one is a little bit smaller than the one that we have in Orlando. Um, I'll say it's slightly smaller, um, but I still truly believe like these, these were wings. There was something in there, like a fin or a wing, something where these hands are, but I don't ever think that they were actually like hands. We see them and we assume that's there, but I have a feeling like something covered that. Let me take a look right here. There's people working around the clock, going through fossils. Breaking up what's rock, what's bone. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is what she's doing in front of us. And you can see that she's actually doing, she's working on repairs for a Dimatron specimen found in Texas over 100 years ago. And that piece that she has in her hand is 290 million years old. All right, so which exhibit are we in? We are in um, the Outbreak Exhibit for ep Epidemics. Now, did you know this exhibit contains human remains, images, and content about disease symptoms, transmissions, and fatalities? Yes, like you know how interested I am in like ancient disease, any sort of disease. Like I like studying it and learning about it. I just told Sean a bunch of stuff about like the bubonic plague and the Spanish flu and the Justinian um, plague and he didn't know what any of that stuff was. I'm so excited right now. <laughs> all right, let's go check it out. Here's some things to know. Animals and humans have always shared viruses. This became more common around 11,000 years ago as people began to domesticate animals and live closely with them. And most viruses that affect humans are zoonotic. They originated in animals. Influenza, Ebola, Zika, and HIV are among 800 known zoonotic viruses that cause human diseases. Now here's something that I didn't know. I didn't know about the Nipah. 
in the spring of 2001, 13 people in Bangladesh fell ill with a fever, trouble breathing, and brain inflammation. None of them died within a week. Testing showed that NEPA had infected the patients. But how did they get the NEPA? They got it from fruit bats. So they had NEPA, or uh, asking the right questions to reveal they had either drunk raw date palm sap or had directly cared for an infected person. It may have came from these guys. And large fruit bats carry the NEPA virus, which they shed through their saliva, urine, and feces. But because the fruit bats are spitting, peeing, and pooping on um, the sap, the locals prefer to drink the sap raw and fresh. And that's kind of how disease is passed on. You know, whenever you talk about, you know, health and diseases, you know, HIV is definitely one of the big things that I think affects everyone like to this very day. Um, as you can see, HIV is spread through certain body fluids, usually potato sex and sharing needles with someone infected with HIV. And you can't get HIV from casual contact with a person living with HIV. But you can see... Throughout the times, of us doing our part to combat AIDS, or at least find a cure for AIDS. There's the type of pills that they can take. It keeps them alive. If you look up here, there's a mosquito. This mosquito is important. It's a carrot Zika. Zika looked a lot like this, and as you guys know, like this was like a big hot topic back in 2015. Um, Brazil saw an increase of the number of babies with, is it microcephaly? Microcephaly. Due to underdeveloped brains. So, I will say, Zika is still very scary. Especially, especially in the um, Florida area. We can see what does carry Zika. It's not just mosquitoes, which you can see here, but also ticks, fleas, uh, the kissing bugs, because they also bring chagas, and tsetse flies, tsetse flies. By the way, I know that like oh, a no, couple of vlogs ago, there. I was like, hey, um, like Washington it does not allow rain like it gets really really hot and then you just want that rain well guess what it's like torrential downpouring right now look at the ground like, look at look at the ground That's right now water. should we go back up man I'm not going out there now okay we gotta get food oh, I'm so hungry by the way I found a statue this is some from Easter Island this is cool all right so we left the uh, National History Museum, which was awesome. There was a lot of exhibits. We didn't get to cover a lot of exhibits because there's a lot more stuff in there than what we originally thought. Like and everyone was in there, but yeah. our the exhibits we enjoyed the most are the ones that you guys focus to see. Yes, like a lot of the exhibits like kind of spawned onto a different exhibit, which spawned onto a different exhibit and a different exhibit. So there was a lot of stuff happening, but we did see some great stuff. Well, that's it. Um, I think this is probably, <laughs> we're about to leave. Uh, I think I have one more. It's just kind of a collection of everything I just filmed out here. But that's it, we're done. We're sick of it. We're sick of it. Time to go home. I'm out. <laughs>